Welcome to Outer Space, International Arts and Class Travel Podcast. On this week's show, the struggle for Baroni Taylor's graffiti sculpture, an interview with Leo Carson, an artist from Oakland, USA. Okay, so my name is Rob McDonald. I am the host of Outer Space International Arts and Class Struggle podcast. And today we've got a special uh, episode. We're taking, we're in the middle of a break between episode two, uh, series two and series three. Um, but we interrupted our, our preparations for series three, series three to talk to Leo Carson, who is from Oakland in the USA, who's a sculptor. Um, and he's done a very interesting piece of work, uh, a graffiti sculpture, a graffiti monument of a Barona Taylor who was killed by the police. So we've got you. Have we got you there, uh, uh, Leo? Are you with us? Yeah. Hey, Rob. Hey, man. How's it well, going? Thank, thank, yeah, great. Great. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, that I mean, I give a brief introduction. I try to cram in quickly what the podcast is going to be about. But I mean, before we go anywhere with the um, the really interesting monument that you're involved in, um, just tell us a little bit about who you are um, for the listeners. Yeah. Um, well, I I'm a sculptor. Um, before the pandemic, I worked at a burger restaurant in Berkeley, um, and I've been laid off for the last eight months. Um, and I'm working on getting my teaching credential to teach, uh, high school ceramics. Uh, and so I've been living off the, the unemployment checks, um, from the government for, for the duration of the pandemic here. Um, and, you know, I'm, a um, I'm a socialist and an organizer and, um, you know, even before I'm an artist, I'm an activist and I'm, um, yeah. you know, look to. I think I think we we might come back to the to the bird okay. flipping artist later on because I think it's <laughs> you know you actually have, you know for the listeners you're a very talented sculptor um and you're trained yeah you've been you know you've you you haven't just uh, you're not just making it up it is a career move you're going to be a teacher with it but uh, you you're an artist and the reason the reason I get you on the show today is to talk about um the sculpture monument, graffiti monument, we'll come to it in a, in a minute, that you made of Baroni Taylor, um, who was killed by the police. Could you give a little bit, before we go into the, the, the arts um, angle of this discussion, could you explain, first of all, about Baroni Taylor? What was the story? What happened? What's the, what's the background um, to, to her story? Yeah, so uh, Brianna Taylor was a paramedic in Louisville, Kentucky, um, who was murdered by the police um, earlier in 2020. And her um, death was one of the um, uh, um, big sparks for the uh, in- enormous um, Black Lives Matter uprising over the summer, which, you know, Louisville, Kentucky is all the way across the country from Oakland, California. But... Mm. Um, but the protests were, were huge here. Um, uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands of people um, coming out into the streets to support. Um, and, um, you know, there's been a couple of developments with Brianna's case recently. Um, you know, the, um, several months ago, the um, officers involved in her death were, um, you know, in, um, uh, in a court setting and the officers that had, uh, um, shot her were found to um, have not been guilty of anything. Um, and the officers that missed and damaged the wall were um, held responsible for the property damage. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that that, uh, um, that really is a powerful symbol of, mm. um, you know, the system that values property over, over life. Yeah, no, that's bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, yeah. guilty but not guilty. 
and not and so so this is an ongoing uh, part i mean it's interesting because i think many listeners are uh, you know from outside the us obviously were involved in black lives matter demonstrations it was a worldwide uh, phenomenon um obviously much bigger I- in the us but people know about uh, george floyd don't F- floyd don't they i mean but this is this is yet another and i think what a lot of people maybe don't really realize is the depth of this this problem in the US you know historically and recently and so you're saying that this was yet another death in the same period of time that took place and obviously you know it was more than one one police killing it's a whole historical problem yeah absolutely i mean i could have made this sculpture about thousands of of folks and you know it's it's a majority uh black and brown people um but racist police killings um they it's you know weekly and sometimes daily news in um in minneapolis where george floyd was murdered um just a couple of weeks ago there was another um police killing uh and um you know it's not always that they spark a worldwide uprising um but uh and you know if they if they did we would you things would be different <laughs> um, but it's kind of it's like it's like a fact of life in in the u.s um, yeah and i think i think that's one of the i mean we've we've discussed it on the show a number of times um from a sculpturing angle from a monument angle um but also from the historic you know it's part of the context of politics at the moment that the black lives matter movement you know wasn't out of context with the wider social problems that are going on you know and at the same time is this is an historical problem in the us you know and one that's you know now is really prominent um and so because of that i you know could you could you then explain what you did as an artist with the piece of work that you created and what happened with it yeah um so you know uh, around the time of the june uprisings and i just want to say like you know um uh, brianna was uh, uh, one of the the primary symbols of the George Floyd uprising over the summer. You know, it was mm. um, it was say his name George Floyd, say her name Breonna Taylor, um, and that's um, uh, just, yeah. So she's symbol. You know, so it's just, it's much more symbolic. I mean, obviously, her particular personal case is of absolute importance. What's actually happened there is is critical that that gets. Um, gets understood and dealt with and justice is served but you're also saying yeah. that she was part of the the symbolic part that took place of the whole movement um she exactly a figure at figure of that yeah no, i think that's yeah. you know it, important to explain that as a broader as a broader thing so yeah. with that in um, mind you you set you set yourself a, a, a bit of a project by the sounds of it yeah um and you know so just to um i guess back up even more Um, or a little bit. So um, over, you know, over the summer, um, all downtown Oakland, the um, shop windows were um, boarded up with plywood. And, um, you know, the part of that was the um, pandemic shutting businesses down, um, but also the um, fear that businesses had from the anger of the protests. uh, And, and so because yeah, you, you, know, you mentioned you mentioned in oakland there was huge protests yeah in, in particular. yeah 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 um huge nightly protests um for a month or you know even longer than a month uh and um and you know what does a whole you know street or district of um you know blank four by eight plywood sheets look like to artists you know that yes, looks like a canvas that looks like a canvas <laughs> um and so, you know, almost immediately, um, uh, the space began to be taken over by artists who were, um, you know, uh, filling it with images of black power and black liberation in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, and it was uh, just a really um, incredible art movement to watch happen unfold simultaneously with this social movement. Yes. Yeah, and I think that's actually a really important point that uh, I think is often missed by many, many people is how 
not not that art is just a reflection of a movement or that some artist after something happens writes a poem about it or does a picture actually it's part of the living process of symbolically marking and uh, organizing around you know that art can have that kind of power so i think you know it's fascinating that you explain that that bit of background yeah um and you know so you know like i said i'm always looking for ways that i can use my skills uh, and training as an artist to support these movements. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so I kind of immediately started working on, on this sculpture of Brianna Taylor to add my support into that chorus of murals and art. Um, you know, sculpture takes longer to do than painting though. Yes. Um, and so I, uh, it's a little bit um, Although I, I do on, know on some painters, I know some <laughs> painters, Leo, that would disagree with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, still you're correct. Uh, the process of sculpting is is not a quick one. Yeah, um, yeah, maybe yeah. The comparison, but it's it's sculpting is slow, um, yeah. and and so that's why you know it, um, I installed it in December. Mm. Um, but but yeah, that was really my my inspiration for for creating the piece. Okay, and so I mean, what I'm—I called it at the top of the program. I called it a, a graffiti sculpture because um, that's what I think it is, and I don't mean graffiti as in a spray can. I mean graffiti in as you put it, without permission. Um, mm -hmm. and, and one of the key, one of the key aspects of, for me, we, we've discussed this on the show as well, a little bit about graffiti and urban arts or whatever words you want to use is the, it's part of putting art into the areas and places where let's say the establishment doesn't necessarily say that you can uh, and as a sculptor as we know you know the squares and you you get lots of monuments of kings and queens and well maybe not so much in the us but you certainly do in britain and in in spain where i am um and actually what what art is public art is really important. Um, so what I was quite interested in is that you made it as part of that and you, and as a monument, as a, as a, as a sculpture, you, you placed it as they had done on the boards. Is, is that what you're kind of saying? Yeah. And so it was kind of a graffiti monument in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know, I built the sculpture myself. I had it fired myself. I built it out of, um, ceramic and wood and concrete and materials that I can afford on unemployment. Mm. Um, and then I uh, called up um, some close friends and we um, took my brother's truck and <laughs> we loaded it up and plopped it down right in the middle of downtown Oakland. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in that in itself is because, because the way you do things actually matters. Uh, I think, especially if you're like ourselves, we, 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 we link the sort of the art with the struggle, you know, the actual, the fact that you decide to put it, it's not as if you go through, I mean, I'm building a big monument at the moment and it's fucking years of work to get it done and mm -hmm. they agree with it, <laughs> you know, but actually yeah. this is relevant for now. So you just put it. Um, and then what, what was the, what was the general response to, to the work? Um, people were really happy with it. People were taking photos with it and it was really, you know, I wasn't sure what was going to happen when I did it. I was like, mm. just, I just, um, but people were really happy. And every time I went by to go check on it, there'd be people there. Um, and, and it was really great to, to see it in that context. And I, I just want to uh, back up a little bit again is, you know, you're talking about how there's, um, uh, sculptures, of kings and queens and actually California was a Spanish colony. Of course, um, yeah. And so we have all kinds of um, uh, statues of uh, Spanish missionaries. And, you know, like there's one in San Francisco that, um, you know, it was of a, um, you know, like a Spanish guy in the, in the hat and, and, yeah, and, then and the Native yeah, American yeah. like curled up at his feet. It's just right. totally derogatory, you know? Well, and of course, I mean, I, I was going to touch on it a bit later, but now we've gone into that zone a little bit. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's the Christopher Columbuses, there's the, there's the whole sculptures were and monuments were a centerpiece of the Black Lives Matter movement uh, across in Britain as well, where they were pulled down uh, and numerous ones across the US. And it wasn't the first round of that, was it, for you guys? You know, um, people were like a bit shocked with the one that came down in Bristol. But actually, this was something that had happened before in the States and there's a lot of the 
right wing statues. Um, and so this is a, it's a big symbolic question, which I think is very important for the, any political movement um, to recognize. And particularly the Black Lives Matter one, it's very important. And, and monuments are a key central symbolic gesture. And therefore, when you see, you know, Christopher Columbus and what that stands for, you know that that's that's a political uh, target, if you know what I mean. And actually, I, I agree with as, as a monument builder like yourself, I agree, I agree in pulling the buggers down. Um, so I, I, the fact is, though, we're not negative. We're socialists. We're revolutionaries. We want to change the world. And actually, there's 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 a there's a place for putting things. And I think that's why I'm inspired about what you've done. You know, you've gone okay. Well, we can pull them down, but let's actually put them up. Uh, and let's talk about our people. Let's talk about the people that have been, you know, murdered on uh, uh, and uh, and those kind of things. So I, it's very good, uh, I think, to have the approach that you've done. So when, once you put it, though, and it had, you know, a general acceptance and people liked it and it was telling, you know, the other side of the story, if you like, that we've just mentioned, what happened to it then? Yeah. Um, so in... A uh, couple weeks ago, Saturday night, I got a message on Instagram, and it was a photo of the um, sculpture, and um, uh, big pieces of it had been smashed off, mm. and um, the, the sculpture had been vandalized. We figured out later that what had happened is that they had tipped it over, um, and you know, it's a it's a 400 pound statue um, even then, um, and I'll talk about that in a bit, but. Um, you know, and I, I, I don't think that you can accidentally tip that yeah. over. Yeah. So, I mean, basically it's, um, it's become damaged in, in this struggle, you know, uh, it's been, yeah. and, and so it's been, you know, obviously attacked because it's, uh, it's posed, it's, it's created an alternative symbol, if you like a counterculture symbol, um, uh, you know, and therefore directly targeted. So what's been, what did you do about that? Did you go, oh, well, never mind. It was just, it was temporary, like a, like, like a graffiti that's been painted over or something like that. You know, did you, what was your response? Yeah, well, I was actually, I was prepared um, to be battling the city. Actually, I was like, okay, any day the city's going to come and they're going to remove it. And it's yeah. just going to yeah, disappear. That was where someday. you thought the, that's where you thought the opposition might come from. Yeah, exactly. Um, and um, and that didn't happen. Um, and uh, so instead, um, there was you know an immediate outcry against the actions um, uh, attacking the sculpture, which um, you know was I think really it, it you know it felt personal, but actually it was directed at the Black Lives Matter movement. It was directed at Breonna Taylor, um, and it's a you know a very you know, it's it's the portrait is a, the likeness of a human being, and to strike or attack a human being, even in symbolically, is is really a um, an aggressive action. And I think that they were trying to intimidate us, and they were trying to tell us to go away. And you know, like uh, we we won't let you have your symbols. Um, yeah. And uh, and you know, and I'm also I'm not the only artist in Oakland um, who has had their um, their work of um, uh, liberation vandalized and attacked. So, um, and yeah. So this is you know this is this is part of the class struggle. This is part of the political struggle. You know, I mean, uh, and even even it being attacked. And your response to that has been has been to what? I mean, what, um, so what's your, plan, what's your plans now? I mean, it's, it's, you made it of ceramics. It's, I, I've seen pictures of it broken. Um, how, how do you respond to that? So the, um, you know, immediate response was to, um, to build a, um, to start fundraising, to rebuild it and rebuild it in bronze, uh, and, you know, in a material that, is much more difficult to to vandalize and destroy, mm. and you know. So I I launched a GoFundMe on um, the I think maybe 18 hours after I found out it happened, uh, and then within I think another 18 hours of that, the GoFundMe had had funded, uh, and that just showed like a really 
overwhelming um, coming together of the community saying that we reject that racism. We, um, we do not support uh, this, this vandalism and we, uh, we want this sculpture of Breonna Taylor here. Um, I, um, I was going to, um, I was checking on the sculpture um, er earlier this week and there was a bus driver. Uh, she leaned out the a window, a black woman, and she was like, are you gonna rebuild that? And I was like, Yes, I am. And she was like, thank you. And and that was just a uh, really um, a powerful moment. Yeah, because I, I was going to ask you about this because I think it's an important question because one, the political connection to the movement and to the people uh, of a piece of art like this is is critical. The participation, the, the belief that they own it, you know, that it's theirs to defend, um, I think is a very important question if you're being, uh, let's say, a political artist. We could discuss that a bit more later, maybe what an artist is and isn't and all the rest of it. But on this occasion, you're very much be, you're very much tying the political question in with a piece of creative, symbolic work. And I was quite interested because when I was listening to the press release, uh, uh, the press conference, sorry, that you did uh, on the beginning of rebuilding uh, the monument, you, you yourself spoke and you also had, a, I think it was a teacher union person or a teacher representative or some description. And both of you connected the struggle with the work and what was going on and uh, and the guy i'm sorry i don't remember his name but he talked about uh gentrification issues uh of that particular area he, he seemed to talk about the the history of the uh the black panthers which is obviously you know kicked off in, in, in oakland and I, I was interested in how you made this how you made this how you use this as a political platform you know not just for the piece of art or the particular moment but that you were using it as part of the struggle and you uh, uh, as as a way of building that struggle you know would, th would that be right to say that that's how you were you were attempting to do it and was the wider intention you know is that true yeah um well i so i think kind of the circumstance i was in is that you know i had um you know kind of independently done this work of art that had then exploded and had become like a, um, a huge phenomenon. And then um, I kind of had to regroup and, um, you know, talk to my, my comrades and my fellow socialists and be like, okay, like, what do we do with this? How do we turn this into a, into a political tool? Um, how do we make, how do we use this to um, uh, not just to, to broaden it beyond just this um, sculpture. And, uh, you know, I think that there's, a, a limit to how much that could be done but it's still like the um you know like that's always the question we have to be asking ourselves is how do we connect this how do mm. we grow it how do we push this um further I, I mean i think it's very interesting on a number of fronts and one one of the things that when i was thinking about it is you know art as propaganda is often shit you know, um, and it's not always, it's, sometimes it's brilliant. Um, but as a general rule, art needs to be itself. You know, it needs to come. This came from a feeling from you. You, you, you were part of the movement. You were part of the struggle. You saw other artists doing stuff. You created a piece of work, like you said, at the beginning of the program with your skills, you know, and therefore it was the work that you did. It was, and it existed as itself. And that's very important for, for art. The second thing and what this shows about is is how do we link the class struggle with the art struggle, you know, and and I think, you know, bringing the workers movement or the, or the general political or social struggles into that arena uh, 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 is very important. And I think I think in, in this in this moment, I think you've achieved that to a certain degree, haven't you? Um, that's, that's how it comes across to me that you there, there is sometimes a bridge between a, a piece of art and the class struggle, you know, and how you bridge that without making it too false if you know what i mean because some art pieces i mean i know for myself when i was younger if i tried to write a political poem it was awful if i tried to write about how shit i felt it was a great poem in, in, uh -huh. in terms of its <laughs> content you know and how it went do you understand what i'm saying so i think you know there's a big question here for artists because we are part of the struggle and how do we bring yes we we have to do what everybody else does in the struggle and we are workers and we have to fight and you know there's nothing special you know but there is also something special about creativity and the arts that can be part of the movement and i think here you've given a good example about how how that can be done in a 
in a, com in, a, in a challenging way to the establishment while at the same time using it as a mobilization tool. I mean, that's how I'm reading what you did. I don't know what your response to that is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I, hope that, I hope so. Um, I think that, you know, it, I never could have like predicted or planned that this would have happened to um, this sculpture. I mean, I guess maybe in hindsight, you could predict that it would be attacked, but I definitely didn't build it with the intention of it getting attacked and this all happening. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so I think that, you know, it, it has allowed us to, um, to organize, but, uh, uh, there's, but it's also like, a um, um, yeah, there's also, uh, uh limitations to it. Like it's not, um, uh, uh, like it, it's a, I think it, it can be a symbol that can support the movement really. That's the, um, and it can, uh, really rally, um, folks around it. But, but I think mm. that, uh, I do think it is limited to a supporting role. Mm. Okay. I mean, the other, the other, the other question I was going to sort of say, I mean, you're from Oakland. I mean, I remember, uh, um, a number of years ago, there was a, a, a fire of a, a, an artist place in, in Oakland, I mean, if I'm remembering properly. And there was quite mm -hmm. a, you know, outcry at the time about the position that artists were in. And, the, you know, there was a certain, you know, call for the, the need to artists to organize. Um, and it's sort of a follow on question, really, that, you know, in Oakland particularly, what's what's the situation with artists? Do they organise in terms of collectives, in terms of uh, supporting roles, as you say, with with the workers' struggle in general? Is there what kind of movements are going on? You know, because we talked a little bit, obviously, about the reflection that came with the Black Lives Matter movement. But is is there any is there any coming together of artists? Because when we've done previous shows, it's it's a question I often come near to the end, uh, you know, and ask uh, ask. The, ask and there is a lot of artists organizing themselves going on around the world and i'm just wondering is there is there any element of that going on in oakland um you know so that's actually something that i've been uh talking with um talking about doing and i, I should do uh is that mm. you know <laughs> all of the artists around the area uh, murals they leave their handles and you can contact them through that and so i've um i want to organize a meeting of artists um, from those downtown murals and um, talk about um, how we can organize. Um, yeah. Um, so cool. I think, that, I mean, that, that, I think that's, that's I mean, direction that I want to take things in. Well, that'd be great. I mean, one of the, one of the, this shows about a lot of different things, but one of the things we want to do is, is use the platform of the podcast to to call for artists to organize i mean i think there is a space myself for you know international artists revolutionary artists coming together you know and and uh, and tackling a lot of the questions you started at the top of the show that you're you and i said i'd come back to it you're flipping burgers you know uh, you're a man of great talent and you know and, and there you are flipping flipping burgers yeah. there's nothing wrong with flipping burgers i've done lots of those sort of jobs but that you're pulling on unemployment uh, and this kind of thing and the pandemic has left artists uh, and and our industries if you like we were struggling to get work anyway but actually the the, the virus pandemic and the economic pandemic has destroyed the arts uh in, in many many in many places so there's almost an essential need for us to organize now um and there's a problem with artists organized we sometimes look individually uh, we sometimes work alone uh, we sometimes don't have a job you know and therefore entering the class struggle can sometimes be harder but i think there is a there is a there is a very important uh, i don't know f flag to put up the artists need to organize, you know, and it starts in the local areas and then you need to link up in other towns and cities and countries. Um, so I, I really look forward to, if, you, if you're going to try and make that move, uh, Leo, that would be cool. The, maybe come back on the show in, in, in some months time or, you know, and say, how did that go? You know, what was mm -hmm. the response? Because, you know, one of the things I'm trying to learn from a personal point of view on this show as well, because I've tried to organize artists many times and sometimes not not easy thing to do. Um, you know, we need to learn the lessons about what kind of forms 
uh, of organization artists can be involved in you know and I, i'm very much in favor of saying you know you the artists need to look towards the workers movements you know uh, the best elements of it at least but i think the opposite as well i think the workers movement's got a lot to learn from the creativity uh, uh, of artists so I look forward to hearing yeah. about that. So what, what's next for you? What's your next uh, next moves? What's your next, do you have some projects come in? What about the GoFundMe? Are you still calling for people to donate to that or have you reached the target? What's, what, what, what's the plans for the next steps? Yeah, um, so, okay, so I guess there's kind of a lot there. Um, with the um, yeah, sorry, in terms of like... that, that, I normally do that. <laughs> I have this habit of actually well, be, doing a podcast hosting. I say this to a lot of people is actually learning a new artistic skill. Um, one uh, that I'm struggling sometimes with because I like to talk myself. Um, so yeah, sorry for the 15 minute uh, question there. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, I mean, I, I can. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can hit all the points. Um, I think that you know, like I'm uh, one of the reasons that I am working on becoming a uh, ceramics high school teacher is because it's a, um, you know, it's a union job that's working with the community, um, with kids and artists. And actually, at least in the US, um, high schools are, are, are where society is the most developed, um, culturally developed um, mm. of, of um, anywhere in, in society. Because every single student um, nearly is able to go to um, a music class, an art class, um, ceramics class, physical education. I would uh, is also a form of culture, um, and um, and you know as soon as they are um, kicked out of that process of that collective learning process, um, and they're pushed into the workforce and um, you know become workers, um, you, you no longer have that time to um, for cultural development uh, and. And so I think mm. um, pushing that and developing it is actually like, uh, that's where I want to be. Uh, and of course, you know, high school students are, don't have, haven't had very much time to develop themselves. And so it really says something about the sorry state of culture in our society that that's one of the high points. But, but I think that it is. Uh, and, mm. and, and so that's, that's, what, that's what I'm doing. Um, and then, of course, also as a teacher, you're involved in the the class struggle of your um, fellow uh, um, fellow teachers and um, uh, staff at the school as well, where um, where there's opportunities for struggle. So, so that's um, that's that. Yeah, uh, that's, that, that, that's your next person. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, as far as the um, the monument, um, you know, something that we haven't covered yet is that actually um, even a couple days after it was um, smashed, it was the vandals then saw the um, national and international um, response to their actions um, and that actually it had been, had the opposite effect as what they were attending. They, um, they completely removed the, the statue and it's likely completely destroyed now. Um, so right. So the whole thing is missing, uh, which, you know, as a artist, that's, uh, you know, it's a much more effective attack, right? Like they, now I have to entirely recreate, like they stole a lot more labor this time than they did the first time, yeah. where now I have to um, entirely recreate the likeness um, of Breonna Taylor um, and, um, you know, finish that and have that uh, uh, cast and recreated, um, whereas previously i could um i could preserve that work that i had done and uh make a mold out of it and repair it so so in response to that that was when we held the press conference and we um on on live camera we uh filled the um wooden pedestal the hollow wooden pedestal that it had been sitting on which had i don't know about a foot of concrete at the bottom we filled it all the way up to the top uh, with concrete so that they couldn't be smashed, nothing could go away. We did that within hours of finding out that um, that it had been stolen to claim the territory and um, and put out the call to the city to recognize this as the official spot um, for for the sculpture. Mm. 
Yeah, to claim that's an interesting point actually to claim the space. Very important, mm-hmm. you know, because what you what you've done in this creative struggle is is win that corner of that of that street for this, you know, for exactly. this for this uh, thing. So, you know, and, and you've done that because you've got mass support it. behind you. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, you we, know, like the, that's the, the mayor... importance of the GoFunds. That's it. Oh, yes. Yeah, so sorry, so sorry, the mayor sorry. tweeted in support of it. Um, you know, the um, uh, the police are investigating it, but there's not. Um, basically, the city's hands are completely tied to do anything in opposition to the sculpture um, because mm. um, because of the mass support behind it. Um, and so that gives us um, a lot of um, uh, leeway to um, to really assert, you know, it's almost like, yeah, exactly like you said, like the city has lost control of that little corner of Oakland. Which is important. I mm-hmm. think it's a, a. I mean, one of the reasons this show is called Outer Space, and it's because it's about winning the outside space. Um, and so, uh, you know, I congratulate you for that. So, how are you going to put it? What, what's uh, you? You're going to put the whole concrete structure again, or the concrete structure still there? Is it? I mean, I saw you filling it, and I was thinking, yeah, do you need some iron rods in there or something? Or shouldn't there be a bit more foundation to it? <laughs> um, and yeah, yeah, I was yeah, wondering yeah. how. How, how I mean, I, you know, obviously a brass one. I mean, a lot of monuments are very high up, so people can't touch them. You know, is there any sort of you've got a bit of money behind you now? Is there any sort of idea about how you might change the design of it? Yeah, well, you know, so I'm a modeler. That's where my skills lie. I know about bones and muscles and clay and all of that. Um, but you know, in building a monument, there's also a lot of construction involved in it too. And I, you know. I know just barely enough construction that I could build that base to begin with, but it was really pushing the limits of my abilities. Uh, and so the, um, you know, that base right now, you know, if we were to knock off the wood, it would be, it'd be real ugly under there. Um, you know, it wouldn't be something that we would want to <laughs> yeah, keep. You need to. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I mean, um, so maybe. I, I, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to think, you know, maybe you need to think about, you know, fitting it into the ground, um, which would mean the pavements need to come up. And, you know, maybe you need to have some iron rods running through the concrete. Um, uh, and maybe you need to clad the stone, uh, the, clad the concrete in, in, in stone as well. All that would make the base very, very difficult to remove. Um, that's probably where you need to use your power with the city council to allow, you know, to to get in there and dig up the pavement and put a bit of a base in with concrete and iron rods coming through it is going to make a difference. You know, I, I think, you know, uh, putting it in brass or, you know, in metal makes it very, very difficult. Um, and then the other thing is to put some sort of surround at the base, you know, um, is another option. It is one of the problems of uh, monuments um, that they can be vandalized, but I think you could make it a lot harder um with a bit of uh i mean this is this is my side of the construction of coming in i've thought about it a lot with the stuff that i make you know and i worry about it because i know i do a lot i'm doing anti-fascist stuff in spain and they're gonna attack it you know um, once you know once it's up and i'm thinking oh what kind of liquid can i put on to protect it what kind of you know this kind of stuff and on one level there's there's not a lot you can do but on the level another level you can make it extremely hard um mm-hmm. i think it was one of the things that i found very interesting i think when the first round of statues were pulled down in the us around there was a lot of confederate statues that were uh, pulled down and they came down really easy because they were mass produced um, um, and the thing is, you've got to make it a little bit more, um, I don't know what the right word with, with a bit more, a bit more strength underneath it. Um, anyway, we're going off, we're going off a little bit, <laughs> but a- any advice you want on it, Leo, give me a call in terms of that side, but maybe Absolutely. the point of organizing with other artists. Yeah. Well, also if you're organizing with other artists, it's, it's also about Skillshare, isn't it? You know? Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, but feel free to contact. Okay. So should, should we wrap it up there? Is there anything else? What do you want to say about the go funding? Do you, do you still want people to throw, throw a few quid in? Um, cause I think, um, I, I mean, think you're going to maybe. Yeah. Well, so I, I, with the, um, foundation and the, um, the base, you know, like the original, uh, amount of $5,000, 
that was um, you know a conservative estimate of how much the it would cost to replace the um, the bust itself and to replace the ceramic with mm. bronze. Um, but now um, that we're also talking about doing the base and um, foundation work, uh, that's something that I you know I don't know how to do an estimate for. So. Um, yeah. Well, let's talk about uh, so that. So I think I, I don't want to discourage people from <laughs> donating to the GoFundMe. Any of the funds that um, you know I don't spend will go directly to Brianna's family. I'm keeping receipts and records of uh, um, all all of my spending, and you know this isn't something that I'm going to be um, profiting off of. Like this really is a, a like a corporate free yeah, campaign. Yeah, put the rest. Back I could actually to get into that. There was a, a wealthy lawyer that tried to like kind of buy out the campaign and. Um, like take control and leadership over it. And I had to, um, you know, kind of rebuke that um, and, and mm. push them out. And that's important. Uh, so, I, I, so yeah, I don't want to discourage folks too much from donating to, to it. raise more money. Yeah. Yeah, get more money in because not only can you put it back into the movement if, it, if it's excess, but my experience is when you're putting things uh, in the base and that kind of stuff, it's a lot more expense than you think. Um, so I, we'll put it in the links in the description below. Uh, encourage yep. people to, do, to, do, to, to donate, definitely. Um, and anything that goes over the top has got to go back to the movement. Eh? So uh, I think people can support it in that regard as well and give you enough room, you know, a room and time and to bring other people in, you know, cause you're going to need to maybe, you know, somebody else's labor is going to have to come in. It won't be mine. Cause I, <laughs> I'm not going to fly there. Am I yeah. uh, in the present time with pandemic? I would, if I was around the corner, I'd come and give you a hand. Um, but I think, I think definitely people should donate to, to this. And also we should keep an eye on you, Leo and, and, and the Oakland artists, you know, cause uh and keep in contact and uh i wish i wish you all the best mate um and from my point of view from a personal point of view i think it was very inspiring acts to do uh and I, when i saw it I, I mean i knew you had, you were up to something and i didn't i didn't click in my head exactly what you were doing and then i saw what you're up to and i thought brilliant and and i think we should be sharing this amongst people and other artists and saying look take things into your own hands, get organized, do stuff, make these things happen, you know, and build the movement uh, around them. So on that basis, I, I thank you, uh, Leo, and, and we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for having me. I, I would love to keep talking. Cool, man. Take care now. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to today's episode. And I really hope you enjoyed the show. Unfortunately, we don't have a space station commentary and music at the end for you this week, as this is kind of an in-between episode between season two and three. So I would like to apologize to those who really enjoy the space station and the music at the end, but I promise we will make up for it in season three. If you would like to support the podcast, you can donate to us on our website. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have something to say to us, then join our Facebook group or contact us at outerspace.com. That's O-U-T-A hyphen space.com. See you soon. <laughs>